Well, okay, we're just starting off, so let's let's take it slowly. Our angle of consideration. Oh, that's another 30. It's just there. Slow down. Okay. It's a 30. Because if this line is parallel, these would be alternate interiors. And we'll do stuff with angle of declination later. For now, this triangle right here is your important triangle. As our bomber comes in on approach. So 4,000 feet here, 30 degrees here. Uh, before I get too far along, let's get the sides labeled. Where am I going to put the opposite? 4, feet. That's the 4,000 feet. Adjacent. That's the X. And the hypotenuse then will be this side here, right? Okay. So opposite, adjacent, hypotenuse. I, I'm working with opposite and adjacent. So Valeria, what, what trick function did you say we should use? Tangent. tangent. How do you know that? Because tangent is the one that uses opposite and adjacent, and those are the two sides I'm playing with. I'm not playing with the hypotenuse. I don't know it, and I don't want it. One trick that I used, I, I've had students use when they memorize this. They write this down, then they write down which one they don't have. Cosine. No O. Tangent. No H. So when they look at this problem, we're not looking for, nor do we have, the hypotenuse. It's just not part of the problem. These two sides are, so no hypotenuse means I'm talking tangent. And again, it goes back to whatever mnemonic or trick or memory aid you want to use to get those guys memorized, that, that's the challenge. So I write down my trig function. Now let's plug in my knowns. I know that the angle of consideration, my theta, is 30 degrees. The opposite is 4,000 feet. And the adjacent is x. I usually round to the nearest hundredth. They usually say round to, the, to at least the thousandth. And your calculator rounds it, I want to say, out like 10 place values. Your calculator goes as far as it needs to. Um, depending on what you're doing, you might have to do that. If you're trying to put guys on the moon, for example, you really don't want to cut corners with your rounding. We're not. We're just doing some examples to learn the concept. You get to get away with a bit. Um, so according to this point 577 is the tangent of 30 degrees. That's what my, oh, not to, not, there's no symbol on it. There actually are no units on the trig ratios. So 0.577 over 1 is 4,000 feet over x. What did you type in to get 0.5? Um, depends on my calculator. If you, have a, if you have a calculator that you enter everything and push equal, you would push the tangent button and then 30 and push equals. If you have the kind that you just have a little screen with numbers in it, you would put 30 in, push the tangent button, and it'll pop that up. And again, if you get something else, you're in the wrong mode. Uh, shift to degree mode, because that'll happen on your homework. It'll happen on the quiz. Um, you want to catch it. And this is also where answers should be reasonable once you get them. So let's see. Now I cross multiply. So this becomes, keep everything in, in one screen here, 0.577x is 4,000 feet divided by it. I'm going to get an answer somewhere around 9,000 feet, I think. 6,000? Oh, that's right. It's not more than, it's not more than doubled. It's less than doubled. Um, so 4 divided by 0.577. Yeah, 6932. Uh, we're on to the nearest foot. Now, your chemistry teachers would actually say that unless you know those three zeros are significant, you should round it to 7,000 feet. Because we have one significant digit, you're limited to one significant digit in your answer. I'm not a big stickler for significant digits on this stuff. I'm more about the concept. But uh, if I hear from chemistry teachers that you're, you're slipping on your sig figs, I, I will become a stickler. 
So don't, try not to antagonize them. <laughs>